Hello, my name is Anand Bean, and today I would like to uh, explain you why EGBs, uh, stateless EGBs, can be beneficial as uh, Jack Soros resources. To, to uh, show you this, I would like to start with uh, a Maven project, and I will use the uh, essential archetype, which is the uh, simplest one, and uh, EGB as a resource, I will call it the project, and uh, go with the uh, a hex group okay it's just a stock project nothing special but then i would like to create a package and call it um of course hello resource and this hello resource is going to be fairly simple and of course hey Duke now let's run it and I will run it on Payara which is the patch Glassfish so it's a Glassfish with commercial third-party support so it launches the uh, Payara, it's a cold start. So this is, so we have Hey Duke, and what we could do right now, we could, uh, for instance, look at the monitoring capabilities of the server. We can go to 4848, monitoring domain server, and we see applications, and there are a couple of applications, and EGB as resource is one, for instance, and we just see basic monitoring like request count and, uh, and the uh, max time, max execution time, error count, processing time, and request count. So um, just general general information. And now let's change something. I will just convert that to an EJB, just to adding a stateless annotation on it. This causes um, redeployment of the app. And then I will just go back. Server, we see the applications and I go to EGB as a resource, and what you see, this is new here, the hello resource, um, hello uh, resource link, I will click on that, and you see here the create count, um, so it's not created yet, so I will just go here and go EGB as resource, resources hello, and just refresh that, so it's created it once. You see, I can I can uh, monitor the um, amount of instances, but even nicer, I can go to the bin methods and see the method hey, and um, you see the method uh, was executed once, and so I can go back and re-execute it several times, and see it was executed six times. There was no errors. There was six successes, and. Um, and the uh, last sample time, this was the execution time. And the nice story is, I can also get the information as JSON, which can be easily processed with any JavaScript client you like. It's very easy, so you can fairly easily write a small Angular or React app which uh, monitors your app. And this is actually what I did with the Project Lightfish. So if you go to GitHub, Adam Bean Lightfish, it actually parses uh, the Lightfish uh, app, parses the um, uh, parses the uh, JSON output of the application server, and uh, provides a nice statistics. So what we get with EJBs, we force application server to emit to emit uh, stats, monitoring uh, statistics, and why why we force the application server because. It is part of the JCP spec and is called um, JSR77. This is ancient one. This is uh, management and monitoring. And um, 
application servers or compliant application servers starting with uh, J2E14 has to emit uh, monitoring and uh, statistics and um, they will um, EJBs are forced to emit these statistics and just um, managed uh, beans don't have to emit these statistics and this is one of the benefits uh, why at stateless on resources may be beneficial. So uh, thank you for watching and see you in upcoming conferences, workshops, um, AHEX TV, uh, Munich Airport or AHEX IO if you would like to learn from home. So thank you for watching and bye.